Greetings guys, this is Magnanimous Minds Lectures Online. We continue treating the Industrial Electronics N2 test one paper which was written on the 2nd of October 2019. Now we are doing question 2 whereby question 2.1 says define the term root mean. Root mean square. The root mean square it's a RMS or virtual or effective value of which it means the alternating current or voltage value that has the same heating effect as a direct current or voltage of the same value. So we're going to define it as the And that's the definition for root mean square. Then question 2.2 says a, it says a coil with a resistance of 15 ohms and an inductance of 128 mA is connected in series with a 58 microfarad capacitor. The supply voltage is 10 volt. Calculate the resonant frequency, inductive reactance, capacitive reactance, the impedance of the circuit, the total current, the phase angle between the line current and the applied voltage. Draw the phasor diagram. So let's write down what we're given and try to answer the question given the questions given to us. We are given that R equals to 15 ohms. L equals to 128 milliandre, C equals to 58 microfarad, V equals to 100 volts. 2.2.1 says calculate uh, resonance frequency and we know that FR is given by the formula which is at the back of the equation paper in the formula sheet which is 2 pi square root of LC. Substituting what we have, it's going to be 1 over 2 pi square root of L, which is 128 times 10 to the power negative 3, since it's milliandres, times capacitance 58 micro, so it's 10 to the power negative 6. This is all under square root. Punch this into the calculator. It's going to be over 2 pi square root of 128 times 10 to the power negative 3 times 58 times 10 to the power 2 6. This gives us a resonance frequency of 58.4. One hertz. Then question two, uh, question two point two point two says calculate the inductive reactance XL equals to two pi FL, which is two pi. Our F is fifty eight point four one. Our L is one twenty eight times 10 to the power negative 3. 
punching this into the calculator we get uh, 2 pi times 58.41 times 28 times 10 to the power negative 3 this gives us 46.98 And then 2.2.3 says at the capacitive reactants xc equals to 1 over 2 pi fc which is 1 over 2 pi times 58.41 times 58 times 10 to the power negative 6 c is 1 over 2 pi times 2 pi times 58.41 times 58 times 10 to the power negative 6 and we get 46.8 9.0 then 2.2.4 says calculate the impedance of the circuit and the impedance is given by z equals to r squared plus x squared but in this case we've got uh, what you call we've got uh, xl and xc so it's going to be r squared plus we subtract the smaller one from the bigger one and the bigger one seems to be this one so it's going to be xl minus xc or squared we substitute what we're given it's going to be 15 squared plus 46.98 minus 46.90 squared punch this into the calculator 15 squared to plus 46.98 minus 6.90 squared and we get 15 ohms and then 2.2.5 says the total current so v equals to i z i equals to v over the impedance of the circuit so it's going to be 100 volts over 15 which is 100 divided by 15 6.67 amps i equals 6.67 amps and then two point two point six says uh Calculate the phase angle between the line current and the applied voltage. So to calculate this angle, we are actually calculating uh, the phase angle, which means which tells us whether uh, the current is lagging or not. And it's given by the formula theta equals to cos inverse r over z then in this case it's going to be cos inverse of 15 over 15. punch this into the calculator it's going to give us zero Calculate our heaters. 
cos inverse of 15 over 15 zero zero degrees and 2.3 says draw the phase diagram and then in this case our phase diagram is going to be like this and we move towards the direction it's a x xl since it's bigger and then towards the direction it's xc and these two actually cancels out in this scenario that we have or in this case that we are having so we've got r going that direction R and the angle between uh, the what you call the current and the voltage is zero, so we also have the voltage flowing in that direction. So that's it for question two and the end of the question paper. Thank you.